Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me yeah, to present you today the SSA Space Situational Awareness Activities that we have at DLR. And looking backwards a little bit, the first time I was involved in such um, kind of activities was the deorbiting of the space station Mir in 2001. At that time, DLR worked together with an organization in Germany that is called FGAN, F-G-A-N, and today the field of SSA or the security tasks are fulfilled by mainly three organizations. This is DLR, this is my organization, the next uh, slide please. Uh, the German Airspace Center. The other one is, as I uh, named it already, the Afghan. They have a, at the moment a TIRA antenna that is modernized to detect space debris. And the third organization is the Fraunhofer Society. Maybe anybody knows Fraunhofer. It's a research organization that works tightly with industry. And especially in our new space, st space strategy that came out December 1st, 2010, it was pointed out that uh, together with these two other organizations, we are focusing mainly on three issues in the SSA framework. This is the space debris detection, and I want to make a point on it today. This is the space weather monitoring, and third, this is the detection and monitoring of near-Earth objects. The next slide, please. Um, uh, some years ago, nobody, like you um, said it already, there's no interface between the governments. And when we started talking with U.S. representatives in the German embassy to our defense attaches, they asked us, uh, why do we need such things like space weather? Why do we need awareness? We have our satellites in space and they're doing the work. And our colleagues from the Air Force said, you know, what happens one day if your satellite get hit from a space debris or from something else? What is if your uh, satellite communication networks break down? What happens <coughs> that when you cannot use your credit cards or y your banking accounts anymore? And people slowly started to understand that uh, SSA, it's a service that we have to provide for the government to keep the economy running, to solve security questions. And looking into detail was what the scientists know, uh, SSA gives us uh, information how to correct signals, uh, because we have to understand how, for instance, space weather influences the satellite communication networks, how uh, space weather, for instance, can twist the, um, uh, the level, the signal level, uh, when, for instance, remote sensing data come down, and uh, the, uh, the bandwidth is uh, changed and the, um, the um, polarization of the signals will be changed. All this has to be corrected. And last but not least, and we started this with a special uh, center in Neustrelitz nearby Berlin, the space weather monitoring was a target on mm -hmm. safety of life operations. That means if an aircraft lands with a single GPS and not with a differential and this signal is wrong, and it uses this signal, it may land maybe 100 meters on the left side or right side from the landing strip, and such things uh, should not happen. So th this um, uh, slide points out a little, uh, points out a little bit how, uh, uh, what kind of support we are providing for applied science as well as for the services. And on the bottom line, uh, DLR is supporting uh, the armed forces, the federal forces, uh, two years ago, we started a tight connection with a center, we call it in Germany a Weltraumlage Center, or in translation, it's a Space Situation Awareness Center. And together with these guys, the next slide please, um, we look what the situation is in space to make sure that, for instance, the satellites from the Bundeswehr, the Saarlupe satellites, mm. or uh, the twin system Terra X and Tandem, if they are in jeopardy, or if the <coughs> International Space Station uh, is facing a risk that it gets, uh, it, it may be hidden from from space debris. Uh, other infrastructure in space you see on the on the uh, lower structures. Uh, have to be monitored to avoid collisions and any kind of damage. And last but not least, there is also DLR is focusing on technology to make um, the communication 
uh, within space or the communication in satellite networks safe and avoid jamming and uh, the um, uh, dismanagement of, of information, developing new te technologies. For instance, you see it on the lower image there, the laser communication. Uh, this is a satellite laser crosslink that was first time established and um, successfully tested in space in February 2008 eight between Enfire and Terrasa X. And actually, what we are working on is the satellite to ground and the ground to satellite uh, network, including airborne platforms. The next slide, please. So more and more, uh, it became obvious that space is a dangerous place. And if somebody does not understand, can you hit the button again for the next slide? Uh, the most important thing is if people do not understand uh, why do they need it. So we are really at the beginning phase and our dialogue with uh, partners in the United States uh, that started already in 2006 uh, ended up now in memorandum of understanding, for instance, between DLR and NOAA for space weather monitoring. We are working tightly, the next slide please, tightly with the uh, space uh, weather prediction center in, in Boulder. But be before I touch the issue of space weather, I wanted to point out a technology that in addition to the TIRA antenna, I told you about Afghan, uh, a special institute, uh, a DLR institute in Stuttgart, the Institute of Technical Physics, started to develop uh, high power lasers which are able to detect space debris. And uh, we can skip this slide. The next slide, please. This is uh, the guidelines that we have agreed with the European A uh, Space Agency and with the European uh, Commission. What are the user requirements? You can later on download this presentation and you have the official text. I wanted to focus more, the next slide please, on, on this topic, the activities for the detection of uh, space debris using high power lasers. And to explain a little bit the principle, can you please switch to the next? Uh, uh, before we before we uh, we come to the detection, we have also uh, in another DLR site in Braunschweig a special team that works on modeling using all the existing data. For instance, the access to <coughs> the libraries that we have from NASA, an institute around uh, Professor Peter Fersman in Braunschweig developed special software that they uh, calibrate and uh, check out regularly with uh, the NASA partners at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. And uh, there are two uh, products have been developed. One is the Master 2009 and the other is the Proof 2009. This is a special software that helps to uh, check out the models, to adapt the models, and if you are interested, to get more insight, I have uh, the link for this and the uh, DVDs and CD for this. I can provide you this information. The next slide, please. This is the principle uh, for the, the so-called concept, the laser-based space debris monitoring. Here DLR works together with a partner, for instance, like, like Fraunhofer, uh, and the DLR Institute in Stuttgart where using uh, ground-based lasers, they can check out in the sky an area of approximately uh, 25 meters where they can detect little, uh, little particles with a diameter from 5 millimeters up to 10 meters and can illuminate them using a laser in space and detect these, um, these uh, obstacles and check out are they already in the library or not, and so they can calibrate the models and uh, come up with new knowledge to have a better understanding what is going on in an, in an area between 500 kilometers and 1,500 kilometers distance from the Earth. I'm sorry, did you say five millimeters? Yes. Uh, it's from five millimeters to 10 meters, you see. Maybe it's difficult to read. But when you download the presentation, you have all these data. And also our internet, if you look on www.dlrde, you find the English button on the upper right corner, and you go for Institutes of Technical Physics, and you find all these laser stuffs. The, uh, the professor there, his name is Adolf Giesen. 
And if you want to get in contact with him, I can help, for, I ca I can help you with this. The next slide, please. This is an animation when our partner laser uh, is switched on to have an area covered. Um, the interesting thing is, if you detect a space particle, you can see it in approximately in a time frame of uh, from of, of approximately three seconds. And in these three seconds, you should detect it and uh, illuminate it and measure it. You can see this in the animation. Can you put the next slide? And now I switch the second topic I want to focus on. It's the cooperation between the Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, with, with NOAA. Uh, we have an agreement with NOAA to detect the uh, ACE satellite in a 24-7 regime. We have a high-speed internet connection with them. So everything that happens on the sun from the point of view astrophysics gets analyzed not only by an ACE satellite that is standing in between Earth and sun, but also from another scientific mission that is called STEREO. It's a two satellite systems, they, they, they look, two satellites look together at the sun and in the middle in between, you should imagine, is ACE, so we can see the solar winds and uh, can make a prediction and can give an early warning. So for uh, starting from this and learning from our NOAA colleagues, we created uh, such a support a mechanism that says we should give the right information in the right format at the right time to the right people to make the right decisions. And I told you at the beginning, here we are working tightly together with the German flight security, the DFS, what in the United States is the FAA, to help them to uh, correct their uh, GPS models, the GPS signals. You can see it here. Uh, the next slide, please. In addition to the to the information that we get from stereo and the ACE satellite, we are have we have a special space weather um, acquisition center. It's called Swaki. Uh, the the page is www uh, and the HTTP. You see it on the on the right left button. It's the swakiweb.dlrde. It's located in Neustrelitz, and they use the infrastructure from uh, satellite system Jump and Grace, and as well as GPS satellites, and check out the and uh, and of course uh, worldwide they are connected to a worldwide ground-based network, and they check out information about the electron density in the ionosphere and what electron density is. You can see here uh, the next slide, please. This slide once more points out the information that we get from ACE and from stereo before we look into the uh, ionosphere. And the next slide, please the next slide. Here are so-called maps, telec uh, the electron uh, density maps over Europe. You can see these blue and green maps and the, sh and the black dots. This is the electron density in the ionosphere and electron density what does it mean if somebody remembers the next slide please uh, now uh, the next slide this shows you how the radio occultation from a gps satellite um, is measured in interaction with jump and grace and this gives us an information what happens in the ionosphere with gps sec uh, signals depending on the density of the electrons and you should imagine w when a GPS signal comes down from a GPS satellite down to the Earth, it goes through the ionosphere and the signal may be bended like an X uh, in a cube function. You know, it's not a line, it's like an X uh, cube function. And then, then more the electron density differs, then more is this X3 uh, uh, three function um, uh, banded. That means we have changes in the runtime, and the changes in the runtime result in a so called uh, uh, failure in the correct GPS information. The next slide, please. Here you can see uh, this, this blue line in the middle where you see the, the red um, uh, area. This is the area. How, how is the pathway from a GPS signal banded when it goes through the atmosphere? So that means such bending of the signal can cause a uh, signal delay 
it can cause fluctuations in the signal strength, uh, uh, strength in this, this uh, means in, in all radio bands, and it can cause a Faraday rotation uh, for, the, for the remote sensing signals, for instance, in, in L-band. So that means looking at the turbulences on the surface of the sun, uh, uh, getting the information from grays and from stereo, checking out uh, the uh, changes in the ionosphere, this gives us an information what's going on in space and how uh, we have to correct the signals from the, uh, from, from the GPS as well as from the remote sensing satellites. Please, the next slide. And here you see the application, the safety of life application for precise landing for, for aircraft. You can see what happens when we have a GPS signal loss um, that is connected to these uh, uh, disturbances in the ionosphere uh, depending on the on the uh, electron density. So the safety of life applications uh, make an, uh, provide a service that, uh, that uh, provides to the, to the institutions data with high integrity, uh, with con continuity, with accuracy, and uh, the um, non-stop availability of the signal. That means, uh, in a worst case situation, if there is a GPS signal loss, we can use a model uh, for the GPS signal and make a prediction and help these users in space which do not have a differential GPS, which work with a, chimp, uh, uh, which work with a single GPS. So this is all what the SWACI, the Space Weather uh, Center is, is in, in Neustrelitz, is working on. The second place where we monitor uh, such signals and where we operate infrastructure in space is located nearby Munich in Oberpfaffenhofen, in Weilheim, where our antennas were. And, our, and there, Neustrelitz and Oberpfaffenhofen, these are the two ground stations. Uh, in, in Weilheim is the German Space Operations Center from where we do all the Columbus operations and operate all the satellites, including some services for the military. Uh, this is the next page, please. This, when you Google the SWAKI, you find this page in the internet and you can look how the services work. Uh, and now I'm through with my presentation. I, uh, the next page, please. If we have time afterwards in the discussion, I have some spare slides which show the countermeasures. Countermeasures, for instance, if we have a risk or predict, uh, if we if we want to avoid space debris, how we will use in future robotics, so-called unmanned on-orbit servicing and maintenance robotic applications, how we focus on uh, not only detecting space debris but maybe pushing space debris, putting a high-power laser on it, and uh, change the velocity or change the the, uh, the flight path so that the re-entry uh, re happens that the space debris can, can burn up. This is in my next slides, but I keep them for discussion because I'm running out of time. I want to hand over to the, to the next uh, speaker. Thank you, Thank Jürgen. you very much for your attention.